Yo, what is up guys, this is Pedro here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the five biggest takeaways after Washington's week two loss to the Arizona Cardinals. So if you guys are new, subscribe for Washington and NFL content. So let's get right into the video. So there's not too many positives. I do have a couple in there out of the five, but a lot of them will be negative. And I'm also going to be giving you guys an update on the Brennan Sheriff injury. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. So the first takeaway and it kind of goes into the second but the players around Dwayne Haskins on offense need to step up yes Haskins should have made some better throws and that goes into the second point but the players especially Logan Thomas and Dontrell Emin they've got to come down with a few catches I mean Logan Thomas a couple of throws were overthrown from Dwayne Haskins but out of those nine targets he caught four probably four out of the other uh, targets that he wasn't able to come down with it hit both of his hands, and you know, at the end of the day, you're an NFL tight end. You have to be able to make some catches, and he, or some tough catches, and he just wasn't able to do that. All the players around Arizona, they made some really nice catches that, you know, it wasn't a perfectly thrown ball by Kyler Murray sometimes, but they came down with the ball. So I think Logan Thomas, Dontrell Emin especially, they need to step up, and overall, the weapons around uh Dwayne Haskins need to step up. Terry McLaurin, of course, he doesn't need to play the amazing seven catches for 125 yards. But Logan Thomas, Dontrell Inman, all these guys need to step up because, you know, Dwayne Haskins can't do it all by himself. And especially the offensive line. And we're going to talk about that later. But that was absolutely atrocious. And the next point is, you know, Dwayne Haskins has to be a little bit more accurate. And um, I'm, pos I'm still... Uh, positive about Dwayne Haskins. I still think he can be a good NFL quarterback, but some of those throws when there's wide open receivers, you have to make that throw. There's not a lot of separation by the receivers, but still he has to make some better decisions. And I think the running backs only being targeted two times in this game. And it was Gibson. I think part of that is Dwayne Haskins not looking towards the running backs on his reads, but he needs to be a little bit more accurate, but at the same time, Logan Thomas, Dontrell, I mean, all these guys need to come down with some of the catches because some of the throws are a little bit overthrown, but still need to be caught. Dontrell, I mean, had one that went right through his hands a little bit high, but most receivers catch that he should have caught that. So I think Dwayne Haskins and the offense in general needs to step up besides Terry McLaurin, and maybe you can say Steven Sims. Everyone else needs to step up. Antonio Guinea Golden got in for a few plays. I thought that was nice. Maybe by week five, week six, he can replace Dontrell Inman because Dontrell Inman has not played good so far. So maybe, uh, like I said, AGG had about five snaps this week. Maybe you can get that increased to like seven to ten next week. And, you know, by the midseason, maybe he replaces Dontrell Inman because I think almost anything is better than, than Dontrell Inman. That's just my opinion on there. So for the offense... In general, Dwayne Haskins has to step up, and especially the weapons around him, they need to be better. The next, and this is just a nice uh, graphic right here, not graphic, but tweet. If you're going to compare Dwayne to Herbert, can we also include that Herbert has Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, Hunter Henry, and a defense that held Kansas City nine points? So he's pretty much saying, like, you can't just tra completely trash Dwayne Haskins when he doesn't have the weapons around him, and a lot of these younger quarterbacks do, Joe Burrow all these guys. So I think we got to be patient. Dwayne Haskins, he is a work in progress. He has a track record of getting better over time in college. He showed that in the preseason last year, he showed that. And in the regular season, he showed that last year. So I think the Dwayne Haskins we are seeing now is not going to be the Dwayne Haskins we see in week 17. So now onto a bright spot. I think Gibson looked really good and he showed the potential of being a star running back, potential Pro Bowl running back year two or year three. I think he played really well. He led the running backs with 43 offensive snaps, 65%, while McKissick got 29 snaps for 44%. Pey Peyton Barber only got one snap. Gibson and McKissick combined for 21 carries, 108 yards, and a touchdown. I thought they played pretty well. Gibson had a touchdown, averaged 4.2 yards per carry. He had a not-so-great offensive line, so I thought that was pretty good. And J.D. McKissick was looking pretty explosive, 8 carries for 53 yards. So I think that is a positive. They both looked pretty good in their 
when they played, I thought Gibson, you know, was he broke so many tackles. There was a lot of times where he probably should have been stuffed at the line of scrimmage, but he ended up getting a few extra yards. So I like that. I think our running back core is going to look better over time, especially Gibson. You know, McKissick's looking okay, looked pretty good yesterday, and that's probably what you're going to see for most of the season. He's not going to get too much better. He might get a little bit better. But Gibson, you've already seen the jump from week one to week two. It's going to continue to grow, and I think by the end of the season, He's going to be getting a couple of 100-yard rushing uh, days. Hopefully, though, I think they need to incorporate him a little bit more in the pass game. And I don't know if that's Dwayne Haskins or if that's Scott Turner or a little bit of a mix of both. But they need to find a way to give Gibson and McKissick the ball, uh, at least passing them the ball a little bit more. Because the running backs only got two carry or two targets uh, in the past game, and all we heard, all we heard this offseason was about how much the running backs are going to be involved in the past game. So I think that is something interesting, and I'm, you know, I'm happy with our running backs. I think they're going to get better over time. And real quick, this is not a takeaway, but you guys can look right here at the snap count for this week on defense. The defensive line, Chase Young, 71%. You guys can see the rest right there. Uh, Ryan Kerrigan got a little bit more than last week, so... Um, they played pretty good. The D-line played all right. John Bostic played every snap, and Kevin Pierre-Lewis played 97%. I think both of them played really well. They're not really well, but they played uh, well. Kevin Pierre-Lewis had a decent game. And then Terry McLaurin, Steven Sims, and Logan Thomas all received at least 91% of the offensive snaps. Dontrell Inman played 68% of the snaps. Okay, now on to the, probably the biggest problem on this team the offensive line is a huge problem and now we'll get onto the update for Brandon Sheriff but we need to make some changes I'll give Wes Martin and John Christian one more week they get one more week against Cleveland and it's still going to be even though they're not going to be going up against Miles Garrett unless they switch him around it's not it's still not that bad of players that they're going up against Olivier Vernon and some other guys this is their last chance if John Christian looks terrible then I will cons I would consider, you know, next week I want Sadiq Charles to be active and maybe get a few plays in just, you know, to get him some NFL experience and maybe week four, week five, you can start maybe putting him in if John Christian isn't looking good because John Christian has not looked good at all this year. And, you know, I possibly think when Brandon Sheriff gets back and I'll just segue into that real quick. So the news about Brandon Sheriff he is so good news about him. He should be out for around two to three weeks, maybe possibly more. But that is good news considering, you know, this it looked really bad. So that is good news right there. But I personally wouldn't mind. We'll give Wes Martin one, two more weeks. Well, actually, we're going to have to give it uh, him time until Brandon Sheriff comes back. But I would not mind if you put Wes Schweitzer in for uh, Wes Martin. I thought Wes Schweitzer looked OK, did not look good. But he looked better than Wes Martin. That's my take. The offensive line as a whole played better in the second half. They only allowed they allowed zero sacks in the second half, four sacks in the first half. So um, that's something to monitor. But our offensive line is a huge contributor to Dwayne Haskins struggling, especially in the first half of both games. They have to play better if Dwayne Haskins has even a chance of succeeding this year. And I think Dwayne Haskins is going to get better. But this offensive line needs to step it up. I mean, I think the right side, you know, they didn't play great. Sheriff didn't even play good when he was in. We'll see, though, uh, what these guys do. And hopefully, I think Sadiq Charles, they're going to maybe ease him in because they liked what they saw from him before he got injured. And, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But I think um, Sadiq Charles should potentially start maybe at the middle of the season to the end of the season. So the last takeaway is the secondary can't... Uh, allow big big plays like they did against Arizona uh, Andy Isabella had a 54 yard catch DeAndre Hopkins had a 25 yard catch um, Christian Kirk had a 49 yard catch and Dan Arnold Dan Arnold had a 20 yard catch you can't allow big plays like that if you want to win the game and part of that is Troy Apke Fabian Moreau they did not play good at all Ronald Darby didn't play terrible but someone that I really liked uh, Cameron Curl uh, PFF grade was a 70.3, 23 out of 106 cornerbacks. So I thought he played pretty well, and I would not be mad if you put him ahead of Troy Apke or at least get some more snaps for Cameron Curl in week three, and then potentially if he's playing well 
and Troy Apke is continuing to struggle, then I wouldn't mind if you put him as a starting free safety in week four, maybe even week three. I think he's looked good. He's a very, very good tackler. And you know, he has not been that bad in coverage. So I would think about that. Jimmy Moreland did okay against DeAndre Hopkins. Ronald Darby didn't look that bad. I did not like what I saw from Fabian Moreau. Hopefully we can get Kendall Fuller back next week because I think that would be a huge boost, especially against Odell and Jarvis uh, Landry. So we'll see about that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash the like button, subscribe if you guys are new, and turn on those post notifications so you never miss a video. Let me know what you guys thought about all of these uh, takeaways. Dwayne Haskins is going to take time, but I think he will end up being a decent quarterback at the end of this season. Thanks for watching and peace.